Uh, hi, Christine. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is Anuradha Kaur here. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of uh, One Network Consulting Private Limited. Um, we are a 25 year old organization. Um, we are headquartered in Mumbai, in India, and we have our subsidiaries in uh, UAE, Singapore, and London. Uh, we have three divisions distribution system integration and managed services so uh, predominantly uh, we started with the distribution of dial up modems with multi tech and that's one so on and so forth then we graduated into networking and security solutions and managed services so um, in fact uh, coming to iot actually we uh, Kind of got into it. Actually, we got it in legacy from Multitech. I would, to be honest, yes, um, because they came up with Multitech IoT gateways, and of course, I am always on the look of you know uh, new business propositions or business models, and this kind of really attracted me, and um, so on and so forth. Then I started building an ecosystem of uh, the distribution portfolio with regards to LoRaWAN IoT uh, products. You know. And then um, we also then became members of uh, LoRa Alliance. We are LoRa Adopter members. Yeah, so that's how kind of everything kind of started shaping up. And then we, you know, kind of evaluated, uh, you know, products and, uh, you know, OEMs. And that's how we've kind of built, uh, I would say at the moment, a neat ecosystem for our IoT portfolio. We could be a one-stop shop for all um, tier one system integrators who are, um, you know, working on these IoT projects. And, yeah. Great. Yeah, and then, and what about you and your own kind of personal journey? So, you you know, you obviously founded your own business. It's now been running 25 years in multiple countries. Well done. Um, you know, and and I, I'm also just interested in you as a person and just kind of how you how you managed to, to do that and kind of what your own personal background is. So uh, I'm a business uh, commerce graduate, actually, um, with uh, not much uh, I'm, uh, of a technical background. So yes, I started, uh, founded the company 25 years back. As I told you, we started with the distribution of multi-tech products. So um, yes, I mean, I would say my personal journey has been uh, very exciting and rewarding. I, I'm very grateful. Um, for the milestones achieved, and of course, there's a long way to go. But I would say my my family has been my backbone and supporting me. I mean, as you must be aware that you know, running a business is not that simple as it looks, or as pretty as it looks. And you know, there are major ups and downs. And uh, you know, my, uh, my dad was my uh, pillar of strength. He backed me up completely. To you know, so did my mom and. Yes, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to honestly do it without my parents because my mom is the one who took care of my two girls and that's how I could um, do my work. Um, I'm sharing personal details with you as you asked for my journey. I'm, I'm no, but not it's, very... Um, it's super yeah. important. I'm also a mother of two and you're trying to run businesses if you don't have a support network. System. Yeah. My support system, that's what I told you. That, that's what gave me the confidence to move forward and you know face... <laughs> All the challenges I came across with uh, a lot of confidence and uh, um, yeah and I would say uh, probably uh, to be honest there is no work-life balance uh, during those years you know <laughs> you just got to prioritize and strike a balance and shift your focus and prioritize according to what is important but uh, I guess when there is conviction and you have inspiration and you kind of get there. And lots and lots and lots of hard work. Okay, so so you said that, you know, so as a distributor for Multitech, you know, they've got um, both kind of modules that allow you to make devices, you've got the gateways. So there's, and as you talked about, you described yourself as a bit of an ecosystem or a one-stop shop because you can kind of provide a, um, the whole chain. Um, before we get too far into the ecosystem, I'd like to just ask you to describe IoT, what IoT means to you in your own words. Okay, so for me, IoT probably will be a new term. Um, I would say we're very uh, 
we were already into it uh, traditionally with machine to machine, right? So uh, Multitech does have a portfolio with regards to machine to machine products. So definitely, I would say uh, uh, IoT is recently a, a big um, boom or a revolution uh, here in the industry. But uh, the concept traditionally machine to machine, we just upgraded on that. And I think IoT is, is such a, it is a, Globally, I would say helping people because you are integrating, you know, your compute systems, your 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 technical uh, equipment, your um, digital, and interfacing uh, with uh, human or objects or things, and consolidating it into data and you know transmitting it as and when required, uh, you know, on your. Um, I think it's giving a lot of. Um, it's an evolution. I mean, revolution. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Uh, it it is simplified so much. It's giving so much to the world, I would say, and uh, it's I think adding a lot of value. Okay, yeah. great. And if if we then kind of go back to the ecosystem, because you kind of described yourself as kind of providing a a solution to tier one, maybe yeah. you could just describe that in kind of um, broader words for those who are maybe not less familiar with what that means and um, so you can describe the kind of end user the tier one and then yourselves and just sure. how you then see that ecosystem that'd be great sure. so uh, see uh, initially as we were traditional distribution uh, you know company and now no longer does do, uh, do those uh, ways work right i mean now we are a value added distributors where we have uh, specialist on board, we have a pre-sales team, we have solution architects, you know, we have, um, you know, sales a sales team and operations team and the post-sales and implementation team and so on. So, um, I think it's no more box selling. So, when it uh, when you, you know, plan, you're wanting an IoT solution or, you know, when we're selling an IoT solution, we can't just sell a gateway in isolation or a sensor in isolation, right? We need to understand the um, requirement and the architecture of the customer. So we, we designed the solution right from scratch. Probably there's a heat map required to validate and what, what would be the appropriate uh, you know, mode, whether are we looking at a LoRaWAN, whether we're looking at a cellular, whether we're looking at a um, LTE, it depends. I mean, you know, we've, we have to identify, uh, you know, so I have a special scheme where we kind of identify what would uh, suit best as for the nature of the business, you know, that will be required. So then uh, first we design the solution and then we, and we at the back end align with um, uh, many OEMs like where when it's the sensor company, we recently tied up with Actility in Abbey Way and it's, it's been a great tie up, uh, you know. And um, of course we are also in touch with Sensor Terra for Soil Moisture Solutions and Eric, so on and so forth. So, um, over a period of, I think, two years, we have been very actively validating and, uh, you know, taking uh, uh, products on board and tying up with the relevant, uh, you know, probably the application companies, the sensor companies. So, so right now we have a, a, a basket full of, uh, you know, various solutions, you know, right uh, from, if you say, from agriculture to healthcare, from manufacturing to everything in between. So we would identify ourselves as one-stop shop. So, and but we are we're happy to be at the back end, support the tier one companies with all what they require. Even the consulting we provide, we provide the hardware, we provide the applications also. So it depends whether they want it on cloud or they want it OCP. So it's 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 um, so predominantly. I think I think it's our our mission to, of course. Um, I think everything moving from on-prem to cloud is, you know, we've been, um, that's been a major journey of late uh, since a year or so. But of course it, it, it varies, you know, because every project is different. You've got to customize a lot in, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of customization required in every project. So yes, I would say uh, in a small way, I think we do specialize and we, we can bring some value to, um, tier one system integrators who front end these projects, or whether they're smart cities or some government projects, and um, so yeah, and um, we we kind of enable them for the L one L two support, and then later on we were completely there to we take we take ownership of our uh, solutions. Yeah. Okay, 
what we recommend. And because of that, we, we are very picky with the alliances to whom we align with you. So no, no. we, the top of the line, best of breed, are our OEMs. Are yeah, it's um, yeah, a, a wise approach, a wise approach. And then, and you talked, like, I really liked how you described that sort of kind of the, the old fashioned reseller models just out where you buy a product, sell a product. And it's it now, work. yeah, it, it totally doesn't work, and it's definitely not in this marketplace. And it's all about value add and thinking about services. Concept and selling, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of concept selling and more the SaaS model. Is hardware is is a matter of time. I mean, it's just gonna. It's a means to the ends. It's not the it's not the the be all. Exactly. Okay. And then, um, and you you also talked at the beginning about having, you know, that you're in multiple locations, so. You're not just India based, but you've got Middle East, you've got some presence in the UK. Um, what do you see between those different markets or, or, or kind of some of the challenges or, or approaches in those different marketplaces? Or is it just the same kind of approach that you're taking globally? Yes, I, I think by now, uh, especially I think our IT industry is uh, pretty evolved. So we, I think, follow a standard universal global protocol. Having said that, the negotiation tactics of customers is, is the different in different regions. I would say India being the toughest. Yes, um, because uh, Indians uh, negotiate really hard. And uh, yeah, so, but um, I, th I would say overall, I would not uh, differentiate it it's because it's, it's become a very flat uh, structure by now. You know, everybody is um, uh, reachable to everybody and customer is very wise and intelligent now. So they, they're very uh, aware of, uh, you know, they have enough knowledge and I think it, it's um, quite a flat approach. I would say I, I don't see any difference uh, any peculiar difference in um, different regions of uh, solution selling? And if and if I talk about then, um, kind of if we take a, a step to the side, so we've looked there about you, your business, kind of where you operate in the ecosystem as you see it. If yeah. I now ask you um, about the kind of advice that you give when people are getting started uh, doing business with you, or kind of these tier one or, or ultimate users of IoT. Um, we've been working with it now for a few years, you for 25 years, you've seen a lot of evolution. Um, but you've also probably yeah. helped people digitize and move towards cloud services um, more, than, more yeah. than a lot of others. Um, if I ask you kind of what advice do you give people when they are starting their IoT journey or thinking about investing in an IoT project within their or organization, what advice would you have to them to help them get started? So, uh, startups, I would say, uh, do your research well. I mean, you know, take calculated risks and do your math because it's, it's become a highly competitive market. I mean, one need to uh, be very vigilant but then there's definitely a lot of scope. But I would say um, right now, I think the, the larger companies, I mean, it's, it's I think, um, are absorbing the smaller units. So one needs to be very mindful uh, with the startups. You know, it's, it's one thing to be passionate of, you know, wanting to have a startup. You know, there are different parameters, you know, whether are you looking for financial security or are you, are you stable enough to venture or adventure into and you can take the financial risk. So there are multiple factors involved which need to be considered uh, when you are, and of course, you, you've got to validate your technologies very well and you've got to pick and choose your mentors correctly and your alliances. So, but I, I think it, it, it's, um, one should be confident enough and one should always be courageous enough to follow their uh, dreams and when there is conviction, you achieve it. Yeah. Nice advice, nice advice. Yeah. And, and, then, if, and then if we kind of, um, we touched on some of the human aspects or, or human challenges right at the beginning actually. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you know, again, you've been doing this, you founded your own business, you've been operating for 25 years, um, you know, you've, you've seen a lot of change in the marketplace and moved with it. Yeah. Um, what kind of skills and experience or, or leadership do you think you need to succeed in the ecosystem um, and this marketplace, given the maturity of the, the market today? Sure, uh, Christine, one thing I am very um, particular about is uh, negative energy. That's a clear no-no. Because once you're surrounded by that or absorbed by that, you can't do nothing, absolutely nothing. And you've got to be uh, open-minded also. And uh, to build a good ecosystem, you've got to understand the mind share of the opposite person whom you're talking to, be it your customer, be it your OEM, be it your colleague. Um, one needs to understand their perspective also. You know, it's not necessary that always, you know, you are right. You know, your, your employee could come up with a fantastic idea. So I would say um, validate correctly, keep an open mind and no negativity at all. Because, yeah, that's something and, and you've got to have the... Of course, the, the PR skills are very, very important. And knowledge, knowledge. You've got to have the right knowledge. You've got to have the confidence to, to make your way. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I completely agree about the negative energy because um, yeah. oh, you have to learn and, and continuously see opportunity. Um, yeah. there's, there's a lot of things that can bring you down <laughs> because it's a yeah. technically difficult uh, marketplace at the moment. So you yeah. have to be able to see that as, as exciting and uh, yeah. interesting and challenging for all the right. Yeah. 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 And messaging forward. I mean, no matter, you might be exceptionally intelligent, but if you cannot convey it appropriately forward, you cannot sell your idea or your concept. You know, good. talking power is also very important. I mean, you know, engaging with the customer, you know, engaging the audience and getting their mind shift and the confidence. All, all good advice. Excellent. <laughs> okay. I hope, so. <laughs> I, hope so. I hope so. Okay, so if I then ask us to kind of take another step back and then kind of begin to talk about what success means. So the success for you as a, a person, um, but then there's also success for you as CEO of your own business. Um, maybe you could um, answer those um, kind of two things. So kind of what does success mean to you as a person, but then also as a, a CEO of an IoT company? Right. So uh, Christina, I would say there is no uh, fixed definition for success, you know, and it is not as um, rosy as it looks when you arrive there. I mean, what it takes you to arrive there is, um, is what is actual, it's the journey, it's the journey. And I think you learn from your um, uh, failures the most. I mean, it's not that, you know, people who are successful don't fail. I mean, you just got to not lose the enthusiasm and try harder next time. And um, um, yes, I think success takes a lot of hard work, whether it is, I mean, you've got to put in the effort, whether it, you're talking in a personal capacity or professional capacity. You know, so it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of conviction, it's um, also a lot of gratitude. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's how your success is how you're, how you're received by your people, you know. I mean, it's how uh, could they feel with you and they make you feel good and they, they look at you as a leader because you lead them. I mean, you make them grow. I mean, it's not about personal growth. It's about, you know, making your team grow. I mean, you know encouraging them and taking taking the company forward um holding the family together if we're talking in personal capacity i'm talking holistically together i mean both the points yeah. together so yeah it's it's like you got to hold your own whether it's your your team or your family and um, your responsibility uh, factor is very important that you own your responsibility i mean you know and you deliver yeah I think that's a, that's a really nice way. And I, I think it's so true. You have to think holistically. You know, you have one life. <laughs> yeah. And all of these are just pieces within it. Um, yeah. And 
is kind of merging right with this COVID is like work from home is like, you know, so it's all merging. Yeah. So um, I can say, I mean, but, uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, this is probably off the thing, but if, if a certain individual has personal issues or, you know, you know, successful personally, then it, it reflects professionally, you know, it, it impacts the work. And if someone is not uh, successful professionally, it, it impacts the personal life. So it's um, sad, but that's how it is. So uh, one can't differentiate. So I, an individual as a whole has to be very consolidated, very grounded, very to, together to, you know, kind of um, make a go of things. Yeah, I guess. I mean, and that's my view. I could be wrong. Yeah. No, no, that's great. And um, and I would normally finish the the, the interview there, but just because we have a couple of extra minutes, I just wondered if there was anything you wanted to say about COVID, or is there been any way that you've been able to help in any of the COVID? Um, yeah. 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 So, um, with regards to IoT, actually, we've been um, kind of uh, in a position to, you know, help the community or our environment. You know, we we are kind of, um, you know, right now positioning and selling a lot of COVID solutions for crowd limiting, for social, um, you know, distancing. So, we have solutions like, you know, uh, all related proximity, like you know, uh, policy enforcement, zoning enforcement, you know, crowd limit so on and so forth and it is um it is uh, very uh, fulfilling to um, be of uh, some use in such trying times for everybody that you know we can uh, make a better uh, living <laughs> in such situations we can enable the environment to uh... but yes i think iot is a boon especially in such times i think um, it's globally helping people. I'm sure it's going to take some time to uh, everybody to implement and, um, you know, in, enforce these policies and uh, solutions. But at least uh, we are, um, for future, we are prepared. I mean, you know, we can. So, you know. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much.